And welcome back to vlog number two. Um, if you've been watching any of these, um, I really do appreciate it. Um, it means that you're somewhat interested in what I have to say. Um, and again, if you've got any questions, um, DM my Instagram or whatever. Um, yeah, just just mess me. I like talking about this stuff. So again, um, if you have a quencher, a question, I'm more than happy to answer it, a quencher. Um, but we're going to be talking about four factors on how to increase performance. But before we get started, everything's written on my piece of paper down here. So please forgive me if I, if I look down um, and try and organize what I'm trying to say. But with preseason rolling around, um, I thought it would be a good idea to kind of talk about these things. And, and this comes from, or this, this discussion is inspired and, and taken from uh, Fergus Connolly's book, Game Changers. Um, if you haven't read that book, I'd highly recommend it. If you're an athlete, it's a, it's a, it's a great insight on um, how to be better. So first, we've got four factors. Uh, we're going to talk about technical. So that's your first aspect. As, no, it's your first factor or aspect. Uh, wow. Well, um, so technical, a skill specific to your sport. So this is stuff like passing and catching and shooting and kicking. Um, this is pretty base level stuff. Um, and that really should, at, at, at a high level, shouldn't have to be considered too much. But again, if you're uh, just learning um, or introduced to a new sport, this is this is an easy way to get better. Um, it still baffles me that people in um, semi-elite or elite still have trouble with the basics. If you want to get better, it's not about bench pressing more or getting stronger or whatever. It's about learning how to catch, pass, kick, score points, basically. Um, yeah, so being able to identify strengths and weaknesses is super important. Um, I think not gone are the days, hopefully, that people aren't getting their reps in. If you're not catching, if you if you can't catch that well, that you're not trying to catch 100 footies a day. Um, and before we go on, I do have a bit of a uh, rugby bias, so um, I'll probably gear that towards that. That's that's my background, so um, and I'll try and relate this to other sports. But um, yeah, forgive me if I uh, relate this to more rugby union. Um, so identify your bread and butter stuffs, and the next component is tactical. So your game plan, um, and this will more come from your your coach um, and dis, and he or she will decide the way in which their team wants to play um, but this also can you know tactic can, can also be um, looked at as kind of figuring out what your job is what what your job how what your role is in the team and um, going from there so if you know we'll, we'll talk about footy for a second if you've got the fittest team in the world, uh, one of the fitter teams in the comp, you're smaller, you're fitter, you're faster, um, but your coach wants to play more of a phase play game and uh, more of a physical and constantly uh, hit up rocks and you know create a bit of phase play, um, as opposed to say running the other team ragged and plugging corners and. Um, throwing the footy around is is uh, probably a better tactical aspect. So, but there are things you can't control. But what you can control is your job um, and how you want to play your game um, and all that stuff. Um, next one is physical. So this is my little bias. Um, but like I said, like if you, if you're technically rubbish, like you can't catch a footy to save your life. No amount of uh, fancy drills or strength are going to save you. You need to work on that stuff. Um, also with, I guess, identifying that your, what your role is and what your position, what your position, how that implements into the whole team, how that help outs the whole team to, um, to win games and get points. But the physical aspect, um, is, I guess, identifying, are you weak? Are you fat? Are you slow? 
Um, these are probably your biggest work-ons and a few of them are before you even lift a weight. Get running, um, get fit, um, be able to keep up with the speed of the competition um, and then work on the older stuff lately. You probably see in every team there's a, a player or an athlete that does bugger all gym, doesn't lift a weight but is so good because they're so technically sound they kick goals they they drain buckets or they score pies um and they just don't lift a weight and unfortunately for that's the real world um and a lot of people have to work harder to um because they're not naturally gifted so um if again if you can fill these four buckets up to uh relatively even then um you're off to a good start and then a big factor that, um, another, sorry, another key factor that often doesn't get spoken about too much um, because it's very hard to kind of, I guess, implement from, I guess, a coaching point of view and that's psychological. And what psychological looks like is, are you happy outside of your sport? Um, are you dealing with stress are you dealing with relationship or work or family drama um and like i said you could be the fittest fastest strongest you could have the best game plan in the world um you can kick it um, or shoot it from halfway um but a lot of stress in your life is just not allowing your head into the game and i think this is such an underrated part and i think sports psychologists uh you know becoming more prominent within clubs and teams um, and, are, and are helping individuals um, deal with pressure. Um, but yeah, make sure you're, I guess, in a good place and, you know, stress management. Um, a perfect example of that is Michael Hoover. He um, obviously was dealing with a few bits and pieces going on and he walked away and you now he's back in the team, but um, very commendable effort, particularly from a, a Wallabies captain to do that stuff, um, particularly right before a tour. But if he, say, was to, you know, continue the, the way he was going, and, and again, like, he's a super fit, strong, like, and just a tough dude, um, great footy player, but he was going along with some outside, outside uh, of, of footy stress that, you know, it wouldn't allow him to perform well. So again, this is just another factor that um, is to be considered along with all these other four things. So, um, but then the big underpin is being healthy. Um, and that kind of looks like sleep, hydration, diet, recovery, all that kind of stuff that, you know, we often overlook the basics and we often overlook learning to pass and catch and shoot all that kind of stuff and we take and we were more looking at the one percenters but if you're sleeping seven to nine hours a day if you're hydrating well enough your body is functioning well um you're not eating crap you're eating a healthy diet which allows you to perform well and for longer um and you're gonna quote unquote fuel your body the right way then um again if you don't have those things um all the other four factors near go out the window. So um, that's it. They're just, I guess, quick things to consider um, and not putting all your all your eggs in one basket, particularly the, the physical basket. So many people uh, are getting stronger, but they cannot catch for shit. So um, make sure you're catching 100 footies a day before you train. So um, that's about it. Um, thank you so much again. Again, if you've got any questions, um, let me know. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you so much.